This is something that happened to me close to a decade ago when I was in my mid-twenties. I've had a lot of gigs in different settings during my career as a security guard, but out of all the crazy stuff that's ever happened to me on the job, this is by far the memory that baffles me the most. It was the first and last time I ever worked at a cemetery. In the past, there were some graves at this particular cemetery that had been dug up. So they invested in a basic CCTV setup and somebody in the security booth keeping watch of things 24-7. I signed on to be the nighttime security guard, the graveyard shift at the graveyard. I knew it might be creepier than my previous gigs, so I did a bit of research about the place online. But the only thing I found aside from the articles about the dug up graves was a review on the cemetery's location pin on Google Maps. It was a one star review that said nothing else but, to whom it may concern, just avoid her. A warning from a former employee. The comment was definitely a little worrisome. I commented on the review and even sent them an email, but there was no response. In a couple days, I got called in for an interview. At the end, I mentioned the comment to my interviewer. He rolled his eyes and confirmed it was from the last person who had the job, but they'd quit without notice unceremoniously. So it was probably just a way to be vindictive. With that said, I took the job and started a few nights later. Unfortunately, within the first week, I found out that the warning was no lie. It started on the third night, and it always happened around 3 in the morning. There would be this very troubled woman who would come up to the entrance booth and ask to see her son. I could tell she was getting on in her years and wasn't all there in the head. But as much as I felt bad for her situation, I couldn't let her in. Nobody was allowed in after the visiting hours and my job was to keep them out. After being denied, she would become distraught and confused as to why she couldn't see her son. But the only thing I could say was to come back in the morning. It seemed like I was dealing with a pretty bad case of dementia, but as time went on, things got worse. By the fourth or fifth time she showed up, I saw her staggering out of the darkness toward the entrance of the cemetery as I got myself ready to deal with her. Hello? May I please see my son? Look ma'am, I'm sorry but I can't let you in. It's the middle of the night. You'll have to come back in the morning. Why? I'm here now! Why can't you just let me see him? He's my son! There aren't any lights in the burial grounds. You could trip and get hurt. I'm already in pain. I just want to see my son. I understand, ma'am, but it's against the law to wander the cemetery after dark. You'd call the police on an old woman? I don't want to, but if I have to, I will. Fine. Have it your way, pig. When she walked away, I sat back and returned to watching the cameras. But not even 30 seconds later, I realized it wasn't over yet. I saw her standing at one of the graves with her back somehow bent over at a 90 degree angle, forming a perfect L shape. I had no idea how she got past me so quickly, or how she could stand like that. I didn't want to escort her out, but I knew it was my job to do so. I exited the booth and walked across the grounds to confront her. But when I got where she was supposed to be, there was no sight of her. I shrugged and figured the problem had taken care of itself, then returned to the booth. Nothing happened the rest of the night, but exactly 24 hours later when she was back, as soon as I saw her approaching, I could tell she was already in tears and about to start shouting, so I kept the window closed. Please let me see my son, I'm begging you! You know you can't do that, ma'am. Ma'am, if you don't contain yourself, I'll be forced to call the cops. When I mentioned law enforcement, she stopped and suddenly backed off and staggered away. Then, when the coast was clear, I turned my eyes back to the camera feed, just to see another impossible sight. She was back at the same grave from the night before, down on her knees, ripping up the grass and digging through the dirt with her bare hands like a completely unhinged lunatic. I immediately rushed out and ran to confront her again, but... When I arrived, she was just standing there with her back turned toward me. Ma'am, I'm going to... I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. Let me see my son! Suddenly, she lunged at me. I turned around and sprinted away, not even looking back until I got back into the security booth. Once there, I collapsed to my knees in shock. I couldn't believe it. 
I'd never seen anything like that before. She looked more like a monster wearing human skin than an actual person. Out of fear, I called the police. When they arrived, she was long gone, so all that could be done was a review of the footage. I was shocked by what we found because we found nothing. There was no footage of the woman anywhere in the archive. It was like she was a ghost. The cops were skeptical, but they asked me to show them exactly where I had seen her, so I brought them to the gravestone she kept going to. There was nothing there, but at that moment I finally read the engraving on the stone. It was the grave of a little boy who'd only lived to be a few years old and next to him was allegedly the grave of his mother. I can tell it was the same person I saw the night before due to the familiar obituary pictures. None of it makes sense, but it also makes perfect sense. The woman truly just wanted to see her son. The next day, I quit without notice. I certainly won't be the one getting in her way. This happened a few years ago when I used to work at the pharmacy section at a local convenience store during the night shift. I didn't do much as business wasn't so busy during these hours. It was literally just me and my colleague Sean who worked the cash register by the front of the store. I worked at the back and would assist customers if they needed help finding their prescriptions. Everything was mundane until one night as I was working. I saw an old woman approaching me from the aisle in the front of the store. Her eyes locked on to mine but in a creepy way. I raised my hand to wave and forced a smile to greet her, but she didn't say anything. Instead, she reciprocated my kind gesture with a grin, her mouth wide open as she stared at me intently. Awkward and spooked out, I decided to take another step forward and offer her my assistance since she was still a customer, and I had no intention of offending her. Hello ma'am, how may I help you? She said nothing. She would simply back up with her walker, standing stiffly from a distance in an aisle as she looked at me. If her stare and sinister grin weren't scary enough, the whole place was almost empty at this late hour, making the atmosphere even more unsettling. Unfortunately, there weren't any loitering prohibitions at the store back then, so I was stuck looking back at the woman, unable to kick her out. As I grew impatient, I felt the need to raise my voice saying, Excuse me, if there's any anything you need, you can tell me. Can I help you with anything? Again, there was no reply. Hello? Do you hear anything I am saying? She tilted her head to the side as she stared and smiled, creeping <gasps> me out a lot more than she already had at the beginning. Minutes turned to hours as we fixated on each other, but not in a pleasant way, at least for me. Since she wasn't doing any real harm, I managed to go about my business. However, occasionally, I'd glance at her, ensuring she wasn't stealing anything or up to no good. Then, the night ended there. The woman eventually left, and it was time to close the store. I heaved a hefty sigh, wondering if the woman was mentally ill or suffering from dementia. Either way, I immediately discarded the thought, hoping to never encounter someone like that again. However, the following night, the inevitable would occur. The old lady returned, engaging in another staring contest that made me uncomfortable for the rest of the night. What the heck is your problem? I hollered, unable to help myself. Then, moments later, the old lady began to do this weird hip roll as she smiled at me. I was convinced she was nuts, like she was some patient who escaped an asylum. Confused and afraid, I yelled, Stop it! You're harassing! me! I'm going to call the cops if you don't stop doing that! <laughs> then, without warning, I saw the most bizarre thing happen. The woman started urinating as golden liquid came spewing out of her dress and onto the floor. I stood there in utter shock as the puddle grew larger and larger. That's when I decided to take out my cell phone and take a picture of the lady. Then, out of nowhere, the woman threw her walker away and started lunging at me. She jumped over the counter and tried to grab a hold of my neck. That's when I raised my arms to protect myself and restrain her simultaneously. Leave me alone or I'm calling the cops! Somebody help me! Moments later, I could hear my co-worker Sean dashing across the aisle. Sean then started pulling the crazed woman away from me. He tried to reason with her but the strange woman wouldn't stop attacking me. After a minute of sheer terror, Sean was able to yank the woman completely off of me. She then ran out of the store, leaving her walker 
her behind in the aisle as she faked her disability the whole time, afraid she'd return. We locked the doors and immediately called the cops to give a police report. About 15 minutes later, the police arrive. I answered all of their questions and even gave them a copy of the CCTV footage. However, even after explaining the details, little has happened since. I would call back for months, but the cops never got a credible lead. In the end, they wanted to convince me that it was just another homeless woman whose name hadn't been registered. Fortunately, in the days that followed, the old woman didn't return. I was finally able to focus on my job, eventually forgetting her. A few months later, I went to a family dinner at my parents' place for the holidays. While exchanging stories at the table, I brought up the occurrence and even showed the image of the woman I took from my cell phone. As they gazed at the photo, my parents shrieked, disgusted by what they saw. Their bodies trembled as if they knew who this person was. Confused and baffled, I was compelled to ask them about the bizarre lady. What's the matter? It's like you guys saw an actual ghost. Do you know this woman? That's when my parents identified the woman in the photo as a nanny that used to babysit me as a child. And since I was too young to remember, I had no recollection of her. I then began to prod my parents into telling me more. They didn't give me the precise details. However, they did mention how they had to call the cops on her because of something she did to me. But what I found truly terrifying was how she never left my side. All this time, working the night shift unaware of who she was or why she was watching me, just gives me the creeps. All I know is that she was mentally ill. It all makes sense why she wouldn't stop looking at me when she was at the store that night. It happened a couple years ago when I was 24. I used to work as a janitor on the upper floors of a skyscraper where I took the night shifts, allured by the promise of better pay. I was in charge of everything relevant to maintenance and cleaning, which meant I had to monitor every floor, cubicle, and washroom. Even the cafeteria was under my responsibility. I admit that when it came to daring games and horror films, it was easy for me to get cold feet, and if it weren't for the compensation, I wouldn't have gotten this job in the first place. It was usually creepy at night since there weren't security personnel at the time, but to make matters worse, there were moments when I felt like I wasn't alone. I'd heard creaks from doors that I swore I had locked, and other occasional noises like tables and chairs moving from time to time. I never got used to it. I was always scared, telling myself that I was only imagining things and that the effects of utter silence were just as deafening as the cars honking on the streets. Of course, I understand the stark contrast between the two scenarios, but either way, I couldn't find peace. So, to maintain my sanity, I tried to be reasonable, assuming that all these noises came from the infrastructure since it had been erected several years ago and it was now decaying. Then, one night, while I was vacuuming on the 13th floor, I heard a noise from the hallway. I tried to shug it off as I focused on my work, but when I turned off the vacuum, I heard the same noise. It was something like someone moaning in the dark, and from the range of its voice, I could only assume it was a male. So, even though I should veer away from the sound, I made a shocking decision to uncover the source, only to find out it was coming from the woman's washroom. When I was in front of the door, the sound was much louder than before. For a moment, I thought about checking inside to prove that I was being silly, but my instincts were telling me to run back to the cubicle area where I should just wait it out. The lights in the room were on. I was still convinced it was all in my head, so I didn't think anything would go wrong. But since I wanted to make sure my life wasn't in any real danger, I sat in one of the cubicle chairs and texted my boss to ask him if he had assigned anyone else besides me to monitor the building. He then sent me an emoji indicating he was confused, followed by another response, which gave me the chills. First, he told me there wasn't anybody else but me. Then, he asked me to check the CCTV cameras to make sure it was nothing. I nodded, thinking it would be safer to lock myself in the control room until morning. So, I stood up gradually and intended to leave the area. But before I could get the hell out of there, I heard someone open the washroom door, sprinting toward the room I was in. I immediately ran and hid in one of the cubicles and remained crouched down for god knows how long. I didn't move a muscle, realizing that the footsteps had stopped by the room I was in.
Then, suddenly, the lights went out, putting me in total darkness. I wanted to scream out loud, but I knew it would only give away my position. So, I held back, constantly forcing myself to calm down and find another way out. <coughs> Moments later, I heard the same moaning sound. I could hear its voice wandering across the vast area of the cubicles. I was paralyzed, unable to move even if I wanted to. Aside from the low sinister moans, everything else was silent. I held my breath for as long as I could, afraid that whoever the trespasser was would be able to identify me. Then, as I glanced above the cubicle wall, my worst fear was realized. A pair of round, maniacal eyes peered over me. That's when I saw the face of a creepy man smiling at me as he looked me dead in the eyes. And then he made that awful sound I've been hearing all night. Mm -hmm. I then ran for my life as the menace lunged at me, trying to grab my arm. But before he could get a hold of me, I ran towards the staircase and sprinted to the floors below. Then, as I scampered, I heard a loud slam followed by quick footsteps desperately trying to catch up to me. I increased my pace as I descended the flight of steps. I was able to successfully storm out of the building. Then, once I was out, I ran across the street and called my boss to alert him of what was going on. He told me the cops were on their way, and so, I waited, crouching next to a massive trash bin where every sound made me anxious. When the police finally arrived, they thoroughly searched the building while I was escorted to one of their cars for safety. Moments later, the cops came out with someone in handcuffs. When I asked the police about the guy, I soon discovered that he was an ex-employee of the firm who was fired for sexual harassment. There were countless reports involving him and other female employees which was resulted in his termination. According to the previous documents, all these women claimed to have been assaulted by the man in the woman's washroom. However, even when the situation went back to normal and I could work again, knowing that this man thought of me as his next girlfriend sent chills down my spine. Since then, my boss has hired security to work alongside my night shifts. I don't know what that man has done to me psychologically, but every time I pass the woman's washroom, I could swear I still hear his moans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.